I'm going to demonstrate several networking options in VirtualBox, specifically Network Address Translation, or NAT, which is the default option, uh, Bridge Mode, and an internal network. And I've got uh, Ubuntu Linux servers already installed, and, and I'm going to use them. They're essentially equivalent, except uh, they've been configured with the different networking options. We'll go through NAT first. Just if we go to the settings in VirtualBox, we can see that under the network settings, the default is that an adapter is attached to NAT, or Network Address Translation. And this allows the uh, guest computer to have internet access from a client's perspective. It can access the real external internet, but generally uh, real devices on the internet cannot access this internal guest device. So this is normal for setting up a virtual machine for browsing for a client usage. The default settings are normally sufficient. Uh, we will see later that we can enable port forwarding so that external uh, hosts can access specific services on the guest. So let's just see that operating. If we start that node, uh, Note that I've already saved it in a start position, so uh, when we boot it up, we'll just log into this Linux node and I'll bring it across. And I'll just log in and get the right username and the password. And I'll just look at my IP address using ifconfig. And note in the second line there of the output, the internet address, the IP address is 10.0.2.15. So this is the IP address that's been allocated to my guest. And how that actually works is that VirtualBox runs a DHCP server allocating uh, uh, IP addresses to the guests. Just to see the difference, so my host computer, my actual computer, I can either open the command prompt in Windows and run ipconfig and see my real IP address, the public internet address of my physical computer is 138.77.176.56. Whereas the guest Linux machine, when we use NAT, gets an internal address. And it's set up such that the uh, real computer cannot, or internal external computers on the internet cannot access this uh, internal guest. Uh, just to see that we can have internet access from my Linux computer, the guest, I can access websites or I can ping uh, real computers. For example, if I ping Google, and we get a response. So I have internet connectivity, but external computers will not be able to connect between devices in VirtualBox and also to allow external devices to log in. And if I try to ping, uh, if I bring up my command prompt and ping my Windows computer had in the background here, I've got a picture that shows the connectivity Noting that uh, the guest I list here is Kali Linux, but it's just a Linux guest in this case. My host computer is Windows 10, and I'm using NAT. So from the real internet's perspective, what happens is my host computer is allocated an IP address. In my picture, it's 1.2.3.4. In my real computer, it was the, uh, the 138.77.176.56 address. So that's the real address allocated to my computer. What VirtualBox does is it acts as a router and a DHCP server and also does network address translation. So when you start your guest, VirtualBox router acts as a DHCP server and allocates an IP address within some range defined by VirtualBox. In this case, 10.0.2.15 for my guest. Whenever that guest tries to communicate out to the internet, for example, when I ping Google, it uses the source address of 10.0.2.15, but when it gets to the VirtualBox router, it implements NAT, which changes the address, translates it to the 
public 1.2.3.4 in this example. And when the response comes back, NAT does its job and forwards it back to the guest. Without port forwarding set up, no one on the internet can access my internal guest. We can enable port forwarding so specific services on the guest can be accessed from outside. The next mode of networking I'm going to show is bridge mode. So I have my second machine here, I'll start that up. Uh, actually before I start it, let's look at the settings. The network settings in VirtualBox, the adapter is set to be a bridged adapter. And we actually choose the, the real adapter on the host computer, in this case my gigabit ethernet adapter. If you're using Wi-Fi, then you may choose your Wi-Fi adapter. And what VirtualBox will do will bridge that adapter with the, the network interface in the guest machine. And again, the default settings are normally sufficient. So I'll start my guest and we'll have a look and see what happens with regards to the IP addresses. Remembering my host is with this 138.77.176.56 address, which is an IP address allocated by my real network DHCP server inside the university. So if I log in to this Linux machine, if we run ifconfig, we can see I have an interface, this ENP0S3 interface, and the second line shows the IP address, this 138.77.176.66 address. Noting my host, dot 56, my guest, dot 66. What's happened here is that with bridging mode, VirtualBox essentially uh, brings the guest network adapter onto the real network. So, and as a result, the real DHCP server in my uh, LAN has allocated an IP address to this guest uh, within the same network address as the host address, this 138.77.176 network address. Just to check, again with this mode, we essentially have full connectivity as the host does. So I can uh, ping, I have access to outside internet websites. And other devices on the network will be able to ping and, and contact my uh, guest device. So for example, I'm on my Windows host and I'm going to ping the address of the Linux guest 77.176 and the guest is .66 and it's talking, it's getting a reply. So we have connectivity from the uh, host to the guest because it's as if the guest is on the same network as the host. What's happening here with bridging, if I bring up a picture of this, we have a Ubuntu Linux guest we have our Windows 10 host. The DHCP server for my real network has allocated my Windows 10 host, the IP address in this demo or in this example picture, 1.2.3.4. And what bridging does is it essentially joins that so that when the Ubuntu Linux guest sends out a DHCP request, it is forwarded on to the real LAN and the real DHCP server sends back a response and allocates an IP address, say 1.2.3.5 or the .66 address in my example. So it's as if we now have two computers on the real land, my Windows 10 host and my Ubuntu Linux guest. And with that, if we have multiple guests in VirtualBox, they'll be able to communicate with each other because they'll be all within the LAN and say the next one would be 1.2.3.6. You would be able to talk to the other guests as well as the host and other devices inside that LAN, other real devices. So this is much easier to allow networking amongst devices both inside VirtualBox and inside the same LAN. In theory, Hosts out on the internet, when we're using bridged mode, can also contact the guest. 
However, in practice, it will depend upon your real network. If you're in your home network, your home router may block that. You'd need to set up that router to allow external internet hosts to access the internet. So let's look at the third mode, which is similar to bridging, where we can set up a network and have the different VirtualBox machines communicate with each other, but a little bit more secure in that we don't use the host IP range, we have an internal network. So I've got another node here and what I'll do is also set that use the NAT node and set that to uh, talk to the Ubuntu Linux internal host. So let's look at the settings for this third Linux guest. We go to the network settings and I've set up the adapter to use an internal network. So not NAT, not bridge, but an internal network. And here you should choose a name of the internal network. And I've just called it demo net. The other settings are the default settings. The idea is that uh, all guests that you want to be able to communicate with each other, you can put them on the same internal network. And I'll do that in a moment for the, uh, the other NAT device. So let's start this one and see what happens. So it's not going to use NAT or bridging, it's going to just connect to an internal network which should allow it to communicate with other VirtualBox machines on that same internal network. Bring it across and it will boot up. So it doesn't necessarily have internet act uh, connectivity. And we're booting up. We'll wait for it. And we start to give this something being uh, slightly slow here. Start job is running for Ray's network interfaces. And it says it's going to wait up to five minutes, five seconds. It's trying to set up, uh, automatically set up the network interface. Um, and because we're using internal networking, it's not going to be able to. So basically, it's trying to get a DHCP. Uh, address from a server, that's not going to work because uh, we're using internal networking. So this is going to run for five minutes and then give up. So I'll just pause now and then we'll explain a way to overcome this problem for the next time. While that node is waiting that five minutes, uh, let's look at our other node. We'll look at the settings. This is the NAT uh, Linux node. Adapter 1, we're going to use NAT. I'll leave that. I'll use a second adapter, so a second network interface. I'll enable that and attach it to an internal network and make sure the name matches the one we gave for the other node. The idea is that uh, VirtualBox will set it up so that the, this network interface is connected to a virtual switch, which is then connected to the network interface for our internal node. They'll be on the same LAN. So we can start that node. Noting that our uh, other one is still waiting that five minutes. So we'll boot this one and set it up as we wait for that. This one has NAT enabled as well on the second interface. Note there it has two interfaces. We'll see uh, more detail shortly. Uh, but the NAT one allows the uh, DHCP server to allocate an address. In this case, the vir VirtualBox DHCP server. So I'll log in. And we'll just look. We still have our internal address allocated by VirtualBox 10.0.2.15. But if we use ifconfig to see all interfaces with a minus A option, we see that there's another interface, EMP0S8, which has no IP address. This is the second adapter, which is going to be on the, the internal network demo net. It doesn't have an IP address. We would need to give it an IP address. And there are different ways to do that. One way, we can use the command line program ifconfig. Uh, another is using uh, the command line program IP and another is to configure it in a file so when your computer boots it automatically gets that. 
Let's use ifconfig as, as a quick way. I want to configure that interface p0sa. Uh, I want to give it an address, and I'll just give it a 192 address 168.1.1 net mask. So I need to manually set a static address. And broadcast if we like, uh, but no, it'll come. And that interface is currently down, so I'll specify it to be up. So that is set, configure this interface to IP address 192.168.1.1 and turn this interface up or turn it on. And to do that, we'll need to be sudo or proceed the command with sudo. And it's asking me for my password. Note it gave an error there about sudo. That is because I've actually uh, changed the host name to natdemo without changing the, the corresponding file for that sudo looks at. So it's confused about netdemo because before it was just called demo. It's not an error, it's a warning. I have config. This second interface, EMP0S8, has an IP address 192.168.1.1. Uh, it should be attached to our demo network, our internal network, and we're going to use it to talk to the other Linux node once that's up and running. Let's see, did it get through the five minutes? Yes, it's gone through the five minutes. So let's log into that one and see A, how we can configure it so it won't have to wait for five minutes the next time and then get it to talk to our second Linux node. So I'll log in. I have config, let's see what we currently have. We have a single interface, it has no IPv4 address because what happened it, uh, when the system booted it tried to get an address using DHCP because we set up internal networking that wasn't possible it actually gets an IPv6 uh, uh, local scope uh, a links link scope address so a link local address which is just allocated um, when you don't get a DHCP uh, response that's of no use to us we want an IPv4 address so we saw on the first node that we could set it using ifconfig. I'll show you another way which will also solve this problem of this five minute wait for the startup. And we need to edit a file. It's called, it's in the network, uh, it's in the folder or directory etc slash network. It is called interfaces. So I'm going to use the text editor vi to open the file called interfaces within the directory slash etc slash network and to edit this I need to be administrator so I need to proceed the command with sudo and ask for my password and this is the interfaces file and this is looked at when your system boots uh, I'll just quickly explain uh, what's here but not all the syntax the first these two lines are showing uh, to enable automatically enable the loopback interface. This is for localhost. This is for the uh, the first network adapter, which is uses is on the NAT uh, settings in VirtualBox. It's saying get your internet address using DHCP. So ask the DHCP server, and that one works. And oh, sorry. Uh, that one doesn't work on this Linux node, it works on the NAT one. So that's where our problem was. It's saying ask the DHCP server, but we have set up an internal network where it won't be able to connect to a DHCP server. So that's the problem here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment that out. In I for insert and insert a hash there to come out those two lines. And I've already as you see, written the replacement lines. I'll explain them. What I want to replace uh, this setting with, instead of saying get the IP address from a DHCP server, I want to statically assign the IP address using this static option. 
and I specify in the next four lines the values I want to give it. The IP address, the net mask, the network address and the broadcast address. In that case, when the system boots, it will read this file, it will see uh, we don't need to ask a DHCP server, we statically assign the IP address and it won't wait for these five minutes to boot up. And of course I don't need to use ifconfig like I did in the other Linux node, I will automatically have this address. So let's try that, I'll uh, write that and quit and I'll reboot and let's hope it boots faster than the five minutes. Shuts down and then starts up again. Remembering the Linux node on the left has the IP address on the internal network of 192.168.1.1 and let's log in. See we didn't have to wait our five minutes there so we've avoided that problem by statically assigning address. And run ifconfig we have the address 192.168.1.11 in this case and they both should be configured to be on the same uh, virtual network or the same internal network which is our demo net. So let's see if they can talk to each other. So here we'll ping 192.168.1.1 and sure enough we get a response. So we can communicate between the two uh, VirtualBox guests. And of course it should work. Okay. So with internal networking, we can use that to set up so the guests can communicate with each other, but they don't necessarily have internet access. Now our uh, left-hand node, the NAT demo, does have internet access because it has two adapters. It has the NAT adapter and the internal network adapter. So we can still ping, say, Google. So we do have internet access as a client from the NAT demo Linux node, but from the internal only demo, if we try to ping Google, we get no response because this one only has a single adapter and all it knows about is the internal network. And we can see a little bit more detail if we look at the routing cable using the route on both nodes. On our internal only node on the right hand side, internal demo, it has a route or it knows about the network 192.168.1.0. It knows about its local LAN only, and it can therefore only communicate with other uh, machines on that same local LAN. The NAT demo node also knows about 192.168.1.0, so it can talk to the internal only node, but it also has a route or a default gateway to 10.0.2.2, which is the VirtualBox uh, NAT router, which then forwards out to the real internet. So with the NAT demo, we can communicate with the internet. With the internal only demo, we can't at this stage. But we could configure the routing table inside the internal only node so that it is aware or it can go via, say, the gateway in uh, the NAT demo. Or we could enable the second adapter and allow it to have a NAT. So, We've gone through three options of using NAT only on a Linux node to allow essentially client only access to the internet. Bridge networking, where we have the guest having essentially client access to the internet plus communication with other nodes inside the virtual box and inside the, the real network. So we can potentially have other nodes accessing servers on the guest. And then we saw internal networking where we can have the VirtualBox guests communicate with each other. They uh, can have internet access if we also enable the NAT on the adapter. We may need to do slightly more settings if we want to allow them to communicate with each other uh, and with nodes outside the VirtualBox. Which one to use? 
If you just want a single node and you want to run it as a client, then probably NAT is sufficient. If you want a more complex virtual box network or a virtual network of nodes, then you may use bridge mode. It's probably the easiest to set up. If you want to be a little bit more controlled or secure, where you don't want uh, the internal nodes to have the same network address or the same IP address as on your real network, you may use internal node. But it does require some additional routes to be set up. With uh, NAT mode, hosts cannot access the guest unless we enable port forwarding. So let's, to finish off, look at port forwarding. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a secure shell server. So I'll install that. So I'm on my NAT demo node here. I'm going to install the uh, OpenSSH secure shell server. And what I want to be able to do is from my host machine, log in to the secure shell server. It looks like I may have installed it before. Uh, I'll shut down that and enable port forwarding. Actually, before that, we'll try and test. So I'm going to open up a secure shell client inside my host machine, my Windows 10 machine. And we can do that using, for example, PuTTY. And we'll open up PuTTY. And our IP address, uh, the problem being, if we try to connect to 10.0.2.15, which was the IP address of our guest, then from our previous settings, it doesn't work. We'll try. And I'm bringing it across. It's trying to connect from my Windows 10 host to 10.0.2.15, but in NAT mode, by default, uh, it cannot do that. So that's not going to res respond. It will eventually uh, time out. I'll give that up. We need to establish port forwarding to allow that to allow that to work. I'll power off my machine and then go to the settings and in network settings and our adapter under advanced we have the port forwarding option and we'll add a rule here. We can give it a name. Uh, secure shell. The host, secure shell uses TCP. What we need to set up and be careful with is the ports. So what I want to say, anything that goes to my uh, goes to my local host in a particular port, I want to redirect it to the the guest. So the guest port is 22 because I know secure shell servers run on port 22. The host port, I'm going to choose a different one. Um, generally, you can choose anything uh, as long as it's not used by other services on your host computer. I'm going to choose, let's say, 5022. And we'll show how that works. So that, for example, if I'm running a secure shell server on my host computer, there won't be any confusion. So redirect anything that goes to port 50222 to the guest port 22. So we have port forwarding set up. Actually, before I forget in port forwarding, we should also complete set the host IP. This is important. 127. That is the local host address saying if someone runs a secure shell client and connects to the actual local host, that is the, the Windows 10 host, and at port 5, 5022, then redirect to the VirtualBox guest, uh, this particular guest, and redirect it to port 22. So include the host IP address there. And we'll start our machine. And while that's starting, we'll start PuTTY. And here we specify the local host address. Basically from my Windows client, I'm gonna to connect to the local host, 
the Windows computer, but to a particular port, 5022, and it's actually VirtualBox that's listening on that port, and VirtualBox knows, because we enable port forwarding, anything that comes in on port 5022, send it to the guest, the NAT demo guest, and to port 22. Let's make sure our node is up and running. That is, and let's open that. And I'll just bring this across. It's come up on my other screen. It comes up with a warning saying, I'm not aware of that. Do I really trust it? Yes, we really trust it. And now Party's come in as the login. So it's actually logged us in now, or, or sorry, it's connected us. Now we log in. And I'm on Mac Demo. So this allows uh, nodes, or my, in this case, my Windows 10 host, to connect to a server on my Ubuntu Linux guest. And in theory, anyone out on the internet can connect to my Ubuntu Linux guest. In practice, your, say, home router, or in my case, my university LAN router would most likely block people out on the internet accessing the internal network. But from my uh, Windows 10 host, I can log in and um, as if I'm sitting at the computer. So port forwarding allows uh, spe specific cases where we can access the guest from outside. So now you can choose from the different options for setting up a, a network depending on whether you want to run a single simple node, you may use NAT, possibly with port forwarding. If you want to run multiple nodes, you may use bridged or internal networking. Uh, and you may still use port forwarding if, if needed.